for Hong Kong as an open economy, we are often you know, affected by the external global economic situation. And the China economy also has an impact on the performance of the Hong Kong businesses. And therefore, you know, making it very difficult for the financial secretary to really arrive at a more accurate estimate. We look at Hong Kong five years from, from, from before, uh, uh, far more crowded. Everything is in shortage whether it's shopping space, office space, housing space, hospital space. Everything is in, in, in shortage. We also have lots of unhappiness in Hong Kong. So for me, it's, that's the, 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 you have a credit side, which is we've got big surplus. On the debit side, we have massive amount. So there's a cost to what we have on the surplus side, which is lots of stuff that we have underinvested in. I think Hong Kong people are also pragmatic and, and intelligent. And if we start to have a serious community-wide discussions on, say, one major social policy issue, be it housing, public housing, or be it uh, long-term hospital care or long-term uh, medical insurance. Hopefully, this will allow various segments of the population to talk sensibly about something that affects every single person. And if this is handled well, again, hopefully, this may reduce the contradictions between the uh, establishment and the pro-democracy camp. The present political system, they could not give uh, the, our leader, the, the leader in the government, the political or social legitimacy or mandate to really to do something um, to have uh, some major reform on various social economic systems. And so every time when we um, look at the budget or the policy address, you see a lot of um, small um, short-term uh, promises or, or policies and not really something which can help us to overcome some long-term issues, which we already see.